The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was phenomenal upon its release in 2017, and no more than two years later, Nintendo decided to announce the development of a sequel. Now, in my opinion, this was way too early to be announcing a new Zelda game, especially for a sequel to an enormous game such as Breath of the Wild. However, this allowed hype for the game to be accumulated over the next four years. As the game was being continually developed and even delayed on some occasions, Nintendo fans would instantly tear apart any piece of new content that was released for this upcoming game. Myself, being raised by mostly Mario games, decided to jump on the Zelda bandwagon a couple months back when I started my Breath of the Wild series. Since then, I have been actively trying to get myself excited for this new game. You, who are watching this, are most likely already obsessed with Breath of the Wild and eager for this game to release, so I decided let's both take a look at this game and see what it has to offer. Starting all the way back in the reveal trailer from 2019, it's quickly notable that this game is giving off a very intense and almost eerie vibe that will keep players on edge. That's not to say that this is a horror game, but it definitely has some interestingly dark aspects to it. Let's be honest, whoever said that Nintendo was made for kids has obviously never played a Nintendo game before. All things aside, this trailer was super mysterious and engaging. There was a bunch of green floaty stuff, Link's hand was withered, and Ganon's head came back to life. This trailer did an excellent job of catching everyone's attention and almost immediately sold the game to any Zelda fan. However, at the end of this first trailer, we can see that this game takes place on the exact same map as it did before. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this considering it's a sequel, but a lot of people were concerned about not being able to explore the new areas of the map, which was one of the main experiences from the first game. Luckily, since since then, we have gotten footage of entirely new floating islands called Sky Islands. From the looks of it, there's a couple large islands here and there scattered throughout the map, but the main question is, is this enough new discoverable land to justify reusing the same map? Well, that's a very deep question, especially considering what we saw at the gameplay showcase of Tears of the Kingdom. We got confirmation of four new abilities Link can use, which are listed as Recall, Ascend, Fuse, and Ultra Hand. These will undoubtedly change how we interact with different parts of the map, such as Sky Islands and Caves. As for the rest of the map, Mr. Aonuma confirmed that a lot of the structures will be different than before. Although he didn't go into much detail about this because he said, If we talk about all of the changes today, we'll run out of time, so we hope you'll seek them out for yourself when the game launches. With all this being said, is Tears of the Kingdom actually worth $70? I was on the fence about this until they gave us the third trailer. Oh my gosh, this is one of the coolest things I've ever seen, and it erased any doubt that this would be a bad game. Not to mention, it completely threw off the direction of this video at the time I was scripting it, to the point where I almost abandoned this topic altogether. The amount of new and immersive mechanics this trailer introduced was insane. I'm so excited to get this game and start uploading it as a series on this channel. Other than that, the rest of this video will be breaking down the game with the third trailer in mind, starting with new bosses and new structures. I'm aware that some of the bosses are references to previous Zelda games, such as the Three-Headed Dragon, but the rest of the bosses we see are pretty cool as well. There's Ganon, obviously, but there's a lot of other bosses I don't think we've ever seen before. And as far as structures go, it seems like we'll be getting a lot more puzzles that are similar to the Divine Beasts. Can't wait to be throwing my controller at the wall again. We already knew that we were going to get new mechanics, but we never expected mechanics as crazy as this. Anti-gravity rocks? floating water spheres, and rockets? Lastly, there's a reoccurring theme of tear-shaped stones, which seem to have a huge role in the game, unsurprisingly. These have been speculated to have different elemental traits, but I think they're gonna act more like infinity stones. Guess we'll have to wait and find out. The rest of the game is pure exploration. We do have a number of confirmed things that have been changed around the map. There's been changes to the villages, and apparently all of the Sheikah Towers have disappeared. The trailer gave us so much, but also kept a lot of things secret, which just gives us more incentive to go buy the game. Also, along with the release of the game, Nintendo gave us an entire new OLED model which looks clean. However, this raises a new question for Nintendo, when are we actually going to get a new console? But that's a question for another video. Thank you guys for watching, I can't wait to play Tears of the Kingdom with you, and until next time, see ya.